here is a guide on how to deal with conflict, how to build conflict resolution skills, and how to always make sure that you win every argument and make yourself be seen in the positive light every time. When it comes to conflict, we have to act smarter than harder, and we don't have to fight a lot, we just have to use some simple tactics to make people be persuaded into your own cause. The reason why I'm making this video is because I've noticed quite a lot of people don't know how to deal with arguments, many people are very weak when they argue, and also many people end up being seen as the villain or the bad guy or the manipulator when it comes to conflicts when that is not even the case. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to deal with a conflict when it already arises. So in the heat, you have a problem with something or somebody has a problem against you with something. You are angry, the other person is angry, you are not pleased, the other person is not happy either. What do you do? Normally, because you believe that you are right and the other person is wrong, you are more likely to want to throw shade you will want to insult them you will want to give them what they deserve the worst of the worst and I understand that all of our enemies deserve the worst but there is a problem with that as soon as you start saying one insulting word and as soon as you get just a little bit aggressive with your body language you are automatically seen as the villain have you seen in those movies the most annoying people are the ones that passive aggressive behind their backs they act very mean to the main protagonist but they act so nice in a very artificial way, in a very fake way. Those people gain the audience's attention because those people can never get what they deserve, the worst of the worst. And they always seem to win every argument. And as bad as it may seem, you have to be like that. So if you're arguing with somebody, no matter how rude they are, no matter how mean they are, no matter how insulting they are, no matter how much you hate them, how angry you are, that you're so ready and you have blemishes on your face, you are not going to spill any bad word you're not going to lose your cool you're going to remain stoic and strong and the moment you do this the moment you have a poker face on your face you automatically hold a position of power because you did not become emotional and responsive to the other person and the other person gets a bit worried the threshold the foundation is kind of shaking a bit because they're like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. why why are they like this and you want them in that position, you want them worried, you want them to feel weak subconsciously, if not consciously. So what do you do? You detach completely. You detach from your ego, from the argument itself, you detach from your emotions, you detach from everything. You just stay there with a poker face, you look the other person in the eye and you just find a way to back away. You do not want to let your emotion control the situation. The moment you do that, your body has no control over itself. The moment you do that, Feelings matter over body. And what happens to people that are emotionally weak and not emotionally intelligent? They lose in life. So find a way to leave the argument. Find a way to leave the heat. Find a way to not be in the lava. The floor is lava in that moment, literally, quite literally. <laughs> and also remember, just because you have the power officially, because you're not emotional, you have the time and power to request as much space as you need, as much comfort and as much detachment from the other person so you require some time to think some time to come back act like the bigger person act like the smarter person the other person will not force you to stay there and argue because if they do they're the bad people and then nobody wants to be the bad person there you go i fixed it you didn't have to throw punches at anybody but now there's step two let's pretend that you have successfully left the situation and there's no hit anymore and you're thinking about it this whole problem now, you allow this problem to take as much emotional energy as you need. You allow yourself in your own space, in your own privacy to be as emotional, as sad, as disappointed, as angry as possible. This is because you want to get emotional and throw all of your emotions out of your body when you have the chance to. You don't want to become emotional again when you want to settle this argument. So what you do is you remind yourself that everybody has a viewpoint in this life. Everybody, no matter how wrong they are in your eyes, they are right in their eyes or in somebody else's eyes. No matter how right you think you are, you might not be completely right. And you might even realize that you might sometimes be in the wrong side of the argument or you might not be completely right. And that is completely fine. You just have to deal with it in a way that does not make you seen as the bad person or the wrong or it doesn't humiliate you in some way. So while you're thinking of how to settle this argument, make sure you analyze the person. Make sure you know their strengths, their weaknesses. Make sure you know where they come from. Make sure you know who they are, how they like to argue things. Make sure you know how they are going to understand you the best. Some people understand people in different ways. And if, you don't, if you're not able to translate your thoughts and your feelings into their language, you're not going to be able to deal with it in any way. 
So be smart about this step. Make sure you know what you're willing to give to compromise. Make sure you know what you are willing to give up to fix this argument. And if it's not worth anything, then just don't fix it. Just separate from that person and never fix this argument. It's better than to compromise something that is worth more than the argument itself or the person itself. And sometimes that's okay, that's the right path to take. But most of the time it's easy to fix. Also, one more thing, never get, how can I say, emotional in front of other people. One time I remember I lashed out at some, some person and I told this other person and the second person was like, wow, that must have been a very bad person because you're usually more calculated. And honestly, I was in the wrong side of the argument, but just because I'm usually more calculated and I never lash out at people, I never get emotional, that person thought that I was in the right just because it took so much energy out of me and I lashed out just one time. And because of my history with emotions, it made it seem as if something must have provoked me very, very bad for me to lash out. So I was in the right without even trying. Settling it, it should be much easier now that you've thought about it and you'll end up out of the heat because those are the hardest steps. When you're settling something, an argument usually, and when you're trying to reconcile with somebody, it's the same as negotiation. It's the same as a comprom compromise. Yeah, compromise. It's the same as a compromise in a business of negotiation. It's the same as discussing business with somebody. What they want, what you want, you make them equal, you balance them out, and when both of you are not happy, <laughs> that means it's good compromise. When you do these things, make sure you give a lot, but not of something that's worth to you. When you talk to someone, make sure you speak in their language. Make sure you know how they understand things easier. Some people are more professional, some people are more private, some people are more jokers, other people are much kinder, other people are more likely to be softer with you, gentle, while others are just want to be firm, direct, no emotions attached, they just want to get to the deal. When you reconcile an argument, make sure you give out your weaknesses. Make sure you are being seen as a soft human being who has weaknesses. But never show what's your actual weakness. Throw out weaknesses that don't matter to you. Weaknesses that you don't care if your people find out about. Share your weaknesses and your emotional state of being in ways that does not affect you personally. But only in ways that makes other people believe that that is part of you. I cannot even give examples for this because only you know yourself. To get what you want, make sure that what you're offering seems bigger than what you're asking back. Say, if you're talking about a project with somebody else and you want the full leadership and creative input, but they want to diminish you in some way, say something like this. I've given up so much time and effort for this project. I've worked so much and I'm willing to give up the financing negotiation to you. And I'm also willing to give up some of my team communication but in return, I just want to be more in charge of the creativity of this, which is not even as important or difficult as what I'm giving up for. This is a very terrible example, but I'm trying to let you know that you can extrapolate this to anything. And you can put this into your own example. Or something like this. Offer something that you don't care about, but seems big and huge and very valuable. And get what you want in return. And make seem as what you're getting back is not as valuable as what you're giving back. Remember that not everything that shines is gold and not everything that's gold shines. If the other person is trying to compromise with you back, if the other person is trying to manipulate you back, stand firmly and do not get emotional. Remain stoic no matter what. If you need more time to think, don't just answer to something back in an emotional like or impulsive way. Don't do it. Don't be impulsive at all. If you need more time to think about something, if you feel cornered, do it again what you're doing in step one, taking space, detaching and having a poker face and get back to them. You have the power now and you are able to take as much space as you want. And lastly, post-conflict. It is not kind to remind somebody of something that you did right but they did wrong and it is not elegant to bring back negative emotions, negative events and negative scenarios. What's in the past happened in the past and you don't want to bring it out. You don't want to bring it back. You don't want that energy, those vibes to come back to you. Post-conflict means you forget about this completely unless you're not happy with it. But make sure you're happy. Thank you for watching. This is how usually people should react to conflicts. Arguments are almost never necessary and also physical. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, aggression should almost never be necessary. But many people don't. But many people forget that and yeah, I hope I gave some good insight.